Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Uh, today, we're talking about the things you need when you get a laser engraver. This is something most people don't think about. Uh, I know I didn't. <laughs> I, I went and I'm like, I just want a laser. And my very first laser, a 5.5 watt diode laser, uh, didn't hardly cut through anything, engraved really well, but I destroyed a lot of wood. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't great. I bought an air assist and kind of made my own thing out of it. It didn't have any way to connect it. You know, it was an experience and I did learn a lot. I will say that. But we've come a long way since then. And uh, I think before you get into lasers, which I hope everybody does. I mean, it's my favorite thing. I absolutely love it and I highly suggest it. And it's, it's hard to tell you all this and, you know, make it sound, oh, you got to get this and this and this and this. And I don't want to discourage anyone because like I said, I mean, I bought just the basic laser and I made do until I could get the other things that I wanted to get. Uh, but I'm going to give you my suggestion. If you can do this and you can get everything you need, you're going to be in a much better place. And just know, maybe some of these things you can get with the laser. So I am going to go into, of course, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be going into the, the best diode laser for, you know, each budget and for every budget. And probably the next video is the reason I had to make this one. And CO2 versus diode versus fiber laser, you know, just everything so that you can kind of make the best decision on what laser to get. Because one of the things we're going to have to talk about is you have a laser like this where you just get the basic laser, you know, air, you can get air, but it doesn't have a honey, it doesn't have a lot of the things, right? Or you can go with an all in one that has everything. You can't just take all of the things that this has as an all in one and say, oh, well, I could just get one like this and I'll buy the stuff. And, uh, you know, if I buy all the extras, then I'll have something that is like this. And that's just simply not the case. An all-in-one has more than the sum of its parts. And I'll be going into that in the next video. But there are negatives to having an all-in-one as well. I mean, with something like this, you can go down for $100, you can get the extension. Well, you can't do that with an all-in-one laser. You know, like the X-Tool S1 or the, uh, you know, Lasermatic here, uh, which are two, my two favorite all-in-ones. You can't just expand these. Now, for the majority of the people, you're not going to need to, or you could just buy the uh, XW, which is the bigger one. But it is something you need, really need to think about. So before, you know, <laughs> finally, let's actually get into all the things you need. I'm going to start right out and say, okay, you buy... An open frame, this is what they call them, open frame laser like this one. This is the one that I will suggest in my video, at least right now. I mean, uh, 550 but you get a $50 off here, so that's $500, and you get an air assist. And I think that's about the best you're going to do right now. 24-watt laser. Uh, it's called the A20, but it's a 24-watt laser. It has all the newest, latest, you know, turn on and air off with, you know. See, that's one of the things, you know. Even if you buy an air assist for any laser, are you going to be able to turn it on and off in light burn? Well, this one can do it. So your initial purchase will kind of determine some of the things you need to buy. And making sure you get the right air assist that will turn on and off with the laser. So now you've got your air assist. Uh, I'm going to show you the kind of, if you didn't get an air assist, one of the, some of the ones you can get. But you got the, your basic laser. Now, what do you need? You need something to put the wood on or else you're just going to, once it burns through this, say this, you've got this uh, piece of wood here with the tiger on it. Now, if that laser was on, you'd be burning the table below it. So... <laughs> It's also going to get a lot of flashback because when the laser goes through, it hits whatever's below it, you know, maybe bouncing back or flashing back into the wood, making the backside look pretty bad. So the first thing most people get, other than an air assist, is a honeycomb bed. I 
this I have, as you can see, I have bought this twice. It is by far my favorite honeycomb bed. Hands down, the quality is just amazing. For $50, it seems almost too good to be true. Uh, this is actually a two trees, and it says Oizgia. I have no idea. But that's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Do not get a 400 by 400 millimeter bed if you have a 400 by 400 millimeter laser. And that's, see, like this Adam's Tech, most of them are going to come with a basic working area of about 400 by 400. Uh, and if you get a honeycomb bed that is 400 by 400, it's not going to fit. And that doesn't make any sense. But the truth is uh, that is counting the edges. So it's 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter. But where you can actually put the wood or whatever you're going to put in here is only about 460 millimeters, as it says right here, but a lot of them won't tell you this. So you need to find out what those actual dimensions are. And this one's perfect. It gives you an, a little bit of extra room to put bigger pieces of wood or whatever so they're flat on the material. Uh, it comes with these little, we're going to go over these in a little bit, but these little tabs that you can put in to hold your wood down, they are fantastic. And the quality, I mean, this is not some cheap piece of garbage that you're going to get. I definitely have bought a few of those. And that's why I'm suggesting this one. Not only do you get the 500 by 4, 500 so that it works on your 400 millimeter or, you know, some are 410. So it's going to work perfect for that. I'm using it on my 400 by 500 back there right now. And it's working great. I'm, I'm losing a little bit, but it's just such a quality honeycomb bed that I uh, I just like it better than <laughs> the other ones. It also comes with this piece of uh, aluminum or steel or something to go below it. So now that you, uh, you are not going to be marking up your table or whatever you put below the honeycomb bed. So some of them don't come with that. So you have to pay attention to that as well. Now, remember, if you are for sure getting the extension or something else like that, you're going to have to check out some other honeycomb beds. But again, really like this one. If anybody has better suggestions, I know Clack Shack said he's got a calm grow and he really likes it. And so maybe check that out, too. But uh, I think for the price, you're not going to really beat this one. So there, you got to add another $50 to your $500 laser and then... The second thing I would say is Air Assist. Now, if you buy that right now from Adam Stack, uh, they are throwing in an Air Assist. That's another reason why I think this is kind of the best or one of the best deals out there right now. And I've looked around. Now, if they change this price, you know, and it becomes more, then, uh, you know, you can have to look around, which I'll go over in the video about that. The next thing is Air Assist. It comes with one now. If the laser you bought, as I said before, has an automatic switch between um, that you can use in Lightburn, which is the software that you're probably going to want to use, then you're going to want the Air Assist that works with that. Now, a lot of times it will come with the machine when it has that automatic switch, um, but just to make sure. But if you do, if it doesn't have that, and you just want an air assist, this is actually a pretty darn good air assist. I have used this a couple of times on a different lasers and it, you know, it works good. Even on up to, you know, 40 watt lasers, it's been fine. I also had this Ortura air assist, which I really, really love, but do I love it for $140? Probably not. If you could pick this one up for like 80, I think it would probably be the better deal. But overall, you know, get a good, a decent air assist that'll be fine. Now you can use your own air if you have a compressor or something. Just make sure that you're taking the moisture out of it. So it, ha you know, you need a moisture remover, and you can look up this. You know, especially if you're living in the south or something, and you have a lot of humidity, that's going to be a major deal for you, especially in the summers. So um, dealing with something like this, you don't have to worry about it. 
Next thing is an enclosure. Well, you may even need that first, right? What are you going to do with this? Unless you're running it outside, how are you going to get the smoke once you're making this beautiful tiger or something? How are you going to get that smoke outside? It's just going to go everywhere. That is very dangerous. So you're going to need an enclosure. Most lasers don't come with enclosures. Now, if you need to save money and just get something, yes, you can get one of these uh, $50 or $60 enclosures, and they do work fine. And they will do the job. But remember, if it has a zipper, you're going to have to unzip and zip this thing every single time you put anything in or out, which will be often. I personally really love this kind. Yes, these prices are high. I showed you in my last video about this Atom Stack, uh, about the Atom Stack enclosure, and I paid $130, no tax, and uh, $10 shipping. It was there in two days. So you can look up that video, the, my last video, if you were looking for an enclosure. It is huge. This 30 by 29, it did fit my A70, which is a big laser. And it really worked great. Now, I wouldn't pay this price for it because I'm even going to have to pay tax on that. So it's going to be closer to, you know, $200 by the time I'm done. But it is a really, really good enclosure uh, for $130. And uh, the thing is, is you're going to want to try to get the biggest fan you can out. Uh, you'll definitely... I would say get one with a four inch fan. That's kind of the biggest one for these uh, regular enclosures. But I personally, I cut a hole in the back of mine. The very first thing I did, you can see the thing. And I put this, the AC Infineo Raxial S6. I think this is the best one for the money. You can see above it, the AC Cloud Infinity cloud line. Now, of course, this is a much better one. It costs like $130 or something, $110. Um, and you can get a coupon. It's $100. All right, let's say you get it for $100. But it has this electric on off and uh, how high, you know, volume of air switch here. And it is a pain in the butt, in my opinion. It's really hard to get it right where you want it. It's hard to just turn it off. I mean, it's just annoying. And this fan is really loud. So yes, it is very... You can see I've bought this one and used it. And you will see this a lot for CO2 lasers, a really big CO2 laser. And that makes sense. You've got so much more volume for that huge case. But for a diode laser, and especially even one this big, I really think the Raxial... S6 is so much better. Look, $35. So much cheaper. It, it is really easy to use. But yeah, uh, great. You're just going to have to get some hose uh, for this and you can decide how long you need it. Here's uh, eight feet for 16 bucks. But, uh, and if you watch the video I just did with the, about the, uh, Enclosure, you'll see how I do it and give you some tips and tricks on how to set that up. But it will make a huge difference. It will get all of the smoke out. You won't smell anything as long as you're putting this to go outside. Something a lot of people don't think about when they need to get a laser is a shop vac. <laughs> Literally, somebody... They just sent me a laser. And it's right at the door. So I guess we'll take a look at that soon. Um, okay. Uh, where, where, where were we? Oh, yeah. Well, I just lost a picture of that, too. Um, yeah, I have this one. Vacmaster. <laughs> I don't even know how to sell it. Oh, Vacmaster, right? For vacuum. Uh, this is a beast. And it just, it will suck up all the parts. It certainly does suck. Forever. I, I used this thing for like six months and I opened it up and it was still only the bottom was full. And that's after doing, you know, $20,000 worth of stuff. It's really, really good. 
and it has the volume, it has the the suck power, <laughs> and everything that you need. I'm I'm really impressed. Now, of course, you can get a cheaper one, or maybe you already have one, and that's fine. I can sing the praises of this one though, for sure. But you know, you're cutting out all of these pieces. Where are they going to go? Uh, it's going to get really annoying if you don't have a way to suck that out. An exacto. I think this is like just such an important part of having a laser. These are really cheap, but just make sure that you have one, you know, say just a little tiny bit doesn't cut out. It's, it's really important to be able to just get to that one little spot. There's it, just to uh, like be able to say that it, you want to pull it, pull your piece out without moving everything. Say you've got it cinched down. It's really nice to have an X-Acto knife to go in there and surgically remove that piece so that you can put it back if you need to or whatever. Or just want to make sure that it cut out. It, there's a million reasons that having an X-Acto knife right next to your laser is a great idea. And uh, I didn't bring up the picture for it, but magic erasers work really good for getting rid of uh, scorch marks or whatever you might have. Now... Make sure that you have good ventilation around those because those magic erasers, the little dusty stuff flies everywhere. I can't even imagine that's good for your lungs. But just a regular eraser sometimes works as well. But something to get rid of scorch marks, always nice. Another thing a lot of people don't think about, and they might be using their laser and and they see that it that their lines are not super clean and they're thinking there's something wrong with their belt, something wrong with their laser, something wrong with the way they tighten something up. And it's actually the table. Uh, if your table is moving back and forth with your laser, your lines are going to be screwed up. So make sure you have a stable table. Don't think that you're going to set this on some picnic table and everything is going to be great. It may work okay for really slow speeds, but uh, when you get that thing moving back and forth, especially with the larger head lasers these days, you need something really solid. Now, I built my table. You, maybe you'll see a little bit of it behind me. I just got some 4x4s and some 2x4s, kind of like this one I'm showing you. And uh, that's going to be super stable. Now, I don't think I could build it for any less than 100 bucks, maybe a little bit, with all these really sturdy uh, pieces of steel on it. Uh, Oh, which I wanted to go back and tell you, when you get a honeycomb bed, for most of you, you're going to want the steel one in case you want to use magnets or something like that. A lot of times they'll make an aluminum one or a steel one. And I, I prefer the steel so I can use magnets, but if you don't want it to be magnetic, then the aluminum one's probably fine. But anyway, uh, sturdy table, very important. And, you you know, of course, now with something like this, you can determine how much size you need for everything. Like I have a three foot by three foot piece of three quarter inch plywood as my table. And I can remove that and make it bigger. I could do make it smaller, make whatever I want. But with a table like this, you have that ability to change the table size just by you just go to your local hardware store Go get a three-quarter inch plywood and have them cut cut it to the size that you want. Now, I do recommend three-quarter inch plywood or something like that, something very flat. Uh, maybe even an MDF might work really well, a thick MDF, just because that's going to be super flat. And it's going to be heavy and sturdy. Something else I want to bring up is a rotary. Now, see, like you get an all-in-one like this, it gives you a price with the rotary without. I think it's really important to do your research on rotary. Don't just buy the first one that you see. There is a big difference, and I am not the rotary guy, so I'm going to have you go to another channel to look up rotaries for your particular machine. But there is kind of this rolling style, and then there's a chuck style. Uh and here you will see the, this comes with both. You can see you've got this roller style here on the bottom, and then you've got what's called the chuck style above. They work differently. Most people are going to say for most things that the chuck style is a probably better way to go. I don't know because I don't use, I don't use uh, uh, rollers. It's just not my thing. But for those of you that do want to do tumblers and round things, that's something you're going to want to look into. 
also risers. If you are going to be doing those rotaries or some other things like that, you're going to want a way to, you know, make the laser just a little higher so it can fit larger objects. So think about that. Uh, I'm not going to go into that too much, but I just want to put it in your head. You know, hey, are you going to have to raise it? I have often done it with things just like little blocks or something. I've actually never bought a set of risers ever. <laughs> just made my own with something. You can use soup cans. Just make sure it's stable. Uh, magnets and door spikes. Now, my buddy Stephen actually it told me about this and it gave me some and it was so, so helpful. Um, and this is a pack. I'm just showing this to you. But actually, the honeycomb bed, the I showed you earlier that the uh, two trees already comes with this. It just didn't come with a thing to pry it out. Uh, but it already comes with some of these. And they're very, very useful for holding down wood, leather, plastic, whatever. Especially anything that just gets a little bit warped. But you really want to hold things down so that if it didn't quite cut out all the way or you want to pull it out, do something to it and put it back in that the wood is not or whatever material is not going to move at all. And these are really good at making do do that magnets to a lesser extent, but they're easier to work with. You could just move the magnet so much easier than prying this up or putting it down. But these aren't too bad and they're ve they work really, really, really well. Saved much wood by using these. Acrylic cr cleaner. Acry acrylic. It has uh, scratch remover, heavy scratch remover, and f uh, cleaner. This stuff is amazing if you're going to be doing any sort of acrylic. Now, you're, on a diode laser, you're not going to be doing clear acrylic. We want to be using a CO2 laser for, for that type, typically. But as you'll see when I get to Craft Closet, there is a ton of acrylics. In fact, I've made three videos on it in the past. They've been pretty popular. Uh, the different kinds of acrylics that you can use for a diode laser, there's a lot and a lot of amazing ones. You could do a lot of stuff. And for your case, I mean, I have used this to remove scratches on my Rolly Laser Matic many times and just to polish it up. Another thing it's really great for is polishing your headlights. It's, you know, you've already got it for doing all the rest of the stuff. And then you can use this. Just try it. Just try it. Just buff a little bit of this uh, fine scratch remover on your headlights if they're a little bit foggy looking. And then do some polish. You will be amazed at how much better they look. A camera. Say you want to get a camera. Now, something like this all-in-one is going to have a camera built in. But say you've got this all in one and you bought a case or you made a, a case for it and you want to have a camera. Well, actually Minshin just sent me this one. I haven't uh, put it together yet. I did re review their old one and it was fantastic. They can do so much more than just like a camera. It is literally made. They, they do them for 3D printers and they do them for lasers and uh, this will do time lapse. It does all sorts of things where you could just, you know, make a video with it, or you can, you know, put, or you could calibrate it to light burn so that you will be able to uh, see exactly what you're doing in light burn. And this is really great. They show that you can do it on your cell phone as well. I have never tried that. But I can vouch for the quality and what they've upgraded here on this particular camera is the most difficult part of a camera is keeping it steady. And the old bar that they used to have to hold the camera on, they did a pretty good job, but it wasn't super stable. So you'd have to recalibrate it. Well, as you can see with this one, it ain't going nowhere. So once you've got this thing cinched down, it's going to stay where it is, which is very important for a camera. And I will be making a video on this one soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, I am impressed with the Minchin line here. Materials. Now, I mean, you it's no use in having a laser if you don't have anything to laser, right? To put use that laser with. Now, I personally get my stuff from Craft Closet. 
you can see all this stuff here. I just got a shipment in uh, yesterday of a whole bunch of wood and plastics and different and MDF and different things that I use on a constant basis. If you look over my best sellers pack, which a lot of you already have, all of those things I have made with wood from craft closet, not only the solid wood that you see here for say the bottle openers or the five millimeter hardwoods that I use for the Lord's prayer crosses or the colored MDF that I use to make the flags. There just have a lot of different things that you can play with. So of course I put a link down below. I do work hand in hand with craft closet all the time. And uh, I've been happy with their service. If I wasn't, I'd use somebody else. <laughs> but do at least budget in something so that you're going to have materials that if you spend all your money on the laser and all the accessories, you're going to have to be able to actually get something to, you know, the wood and stuff is not cheap these days. So that is a factor. Laser glasses. Now, if you have, again, like an all-in-one or something like this, then you don't have to worry about it so much. I mean, I've got these beautiful glasses I got with the Ortur Laser Master 3. I don't think they give these away anymore. But if you have a laser just out in the open like this, you or you don't have a case that uh, it has protection, then you're going to need laser glasses. And you want to make sure you get the right kind for the right wavelength. Now, I did look up diode laser glasses to find these, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're perfect. Uh, I know Ventari does a video on laser glasses, so I would recommend everybody go and take a look at that and then just make sure that the uh, wavelength is correct and these seem like a pretty good price. And I like the color. I'm sure these are fun to wear outside like sometimes I do with these. And the last thing I'll mention, and I'm sure I've missed a lot. I mean, look how much stuff I went through, and there's still more. Uh, I would say you need a power strip. A good quality power strip, maybe something, you know, that's going to shut off uh, when, uh, you know, the power power surge, a surge protector. Uh, I have a audio quality one that, you know... Yes, it doesn't need it, but I'm making clean power into my laser, and I, it makes me feel better. But you probably will have two or three things that you're going to need to plug in, so make sure you get something that you can be happy with. But again, there are probably a ton of things that I am missing uh, that you could think about getting. Say, like extension kits. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go over air filters. Um, please leave a comment down below of anything that I missed here. Now, I did make a video, I think about two months ago, on creating my own air filter, which actually went really well, and it worked really good. Uh, the downside is the expense, and you're gonna see that with the rest of these too. If you're making a lot of stuff like I am, how many, how many filters are you going to have to go through? So if you're putting this outside, that's great. But if you have neighbors, you're going to have to think about that. So do you want something that's just going to filter out, say, most of it? And you want to have a charcoal into that to cut the smell of the smoke down as well so that your neighbors aren't going to get that. Um, you're probably not, for a reasonable price, you're not going to get one that's going to take away all of the smell or all of the, most all the smoke, but maybe not all the smell. These ones you're seeing for a couple hundred dollars are going to work okay, but they're not going to work great. You're probably looking at about five to seven thousand dollars to have a really good air filter for a laser. Something that looks a little more like this OM Tech here, uh, that you're going to have a bunch of different uh, layers of filters. So it's not going to be cheap. And so I'm even hesitant to recommend something like this OM Tech because I've never seen one for under four or five thousand, four to seven thousand dollars that actually really worked well that you didn't have to replace the filter all the time. So you can look more into this, but I just wanted to caution everybody to say, oh, I'm going to buy this two, three hundred dollar filter and it's just going to take care of everything. Do some research on it. It's probably not the case. 
But again, it could be good enough to keep the smoke down so that your neighbors aren't going to freak out if you have somebody really close. And also pay attention to how much those filters are to replace. Because once you buy an expensive air filter, and then you're stuck using their air filters. So, I, you know, I tried to go over most everything. I wanted to make people informed. This is sort of informal, but, you know, I did make a list. Uh, let me know, again, anything I missed. Uh, next video will be about the best diode laser for any budget. And so I'm going to go through all of that. And I kind of needed this video uh, to be able to to reference what we're talking about, the real difference of cost it, between these lasers. Because you can get a you know, $500 laser, but how much is the real cost once you're done getting all the things you need? So that's kind of why I had to make it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you leave a comment to help me learn something. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Love y'all. Six inches by 36 inches, and that gives you a little extra room for all the other things you may need. Uh, this happens to be the A70 to 70 watts, so the air assist and the power are huge, and so that extra space is really nice.